Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing? We're going to give it a a minute or two. Want to make sure everything is being pushed out to the YouTube channel. Looks like it's receiving the content. Awesome. And uh, see if we can start at 301. I normally give it about a minute or so for you guys to tune in. Want to make sure everything is healthy. Make sure the live streaming box is healthy. Make sure the mustache is healthy. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's starting. It is receiving content, which is always a good thing. Uh, awesome. So it looks like we're live. We're finally live. Uh, give it a few more seconds. And it's 301. Awesome. So, hey, guys, welcome back to the server room S. Ugh, episode 12, uh, June 17th, 3 o'clock, every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, the server room. We go over uh, a, a load of stuff dealing with server activities, uh, Windows Server, Citrix, VMware, hardware, deployment, all that stuff. Uh, and I think the past couple of shows, we have been doing a lot of SCCM super excited i'm excited today because uh we are going to be integrating mdt with iscm and hopefully deploy a windows 10 machine awesome so uh as always if you have the power to leave a comment leave a comment at the chat let me know where you're from say hi to me also, let me know how's the weather in your neck of the woods because I'm in New York and it's it was a thunderstorm. It was raining. So a lot of you probably are at home because of the rain. You're not out and about. But uh, if you have the power, leave a comment right below. I do appreciate for those individuals that uh, have been there since the very beginning. Damn, already 12 episodes. We're, we're going strong. I'm super excited. Uh, on episode 11... Uh, we had a couple of hiccups. We had hiccups on the WSUS, right? We had hiccups on the website point services row, crap load of permission problems and all that stuff. That stuff was fixed. Uh, and I created two videos for you guys called After Hours, you know, because basically when us server admins or network admins have issues, we have to work overtime after hours to get stuff up and running for the following day so i created two videos breaking down of what i did to get um our secm infrastructure up and running uh also want to know or want to let you guys know that uh i got three links at the bottom of the description uh one is going to join the btn hd newsletter now the newsletter i normally sent it out every thursday or friday and is and is it is basically an indication that Saturday, it's on, right? The, the show is going to happen. It's going to give you a nicer agenda of um, what's going to happen in shows. You know, it's like a reminder. Uh, just click on that link, sign up, first name, last name, and, uh, and a valid email address. You know, I, I try not to shoot a lot of spam stuff to you guys, but if you want to join the newsletter to keep up to date uh, and you don't want to miss out, oh, you, you know, you want to plan your day, go for it. Uh, also, there's another link for my video gear list. If you guys are wondering kind of gear that I'm using during my streaming or recording or whatever, click on that. And as always, I try to provide a uh, a link. Today is a PDF of a PowerPoint. Yes, I know PowerPoint kind of keeps me on point. But uh, if you click on that link, it's a PDF of 121 slides. Yes, 121 slides. But we're gonna go like that. So it's it's not gonna be long. I'm gonna try to keep everything an hour. And uh, just make sure that you guys grab all that stuff, especially the PDF, uh, because the PDF is what we're going to go over with. Now, this past week, I have been trying my hardest to get the this machine. So I'm going to I'm going to remove lower third, remove me. Hello, hello, hello. So you guys know that Lenovo hooked us up. Thank you so much, Lenovo, for hooking us up with the TD340. Not the best powerful machine in the world, but it's something, it, it, it's been uh, running the show. And uh, we built an SCCM and machine, server, right? A virtual machine. And this SCCM has been giving me so much problems. One, I think because it's a technical preview, it's a beta. It's not really a fully blown, uh, you know, machine. It's not 
ready for production. So I kind of expect all these problems to happen. Now, I never realized when I installed the SCCM, I installed it as a HTTPS, my management point and my distribution point. So if I go right now inside uh, administration, site configuration, servers and sites and roles, and if I right click on my management point and I go to uh, properties, you can see HTTPS. Now, when I did the installation, you should, this was grayed out in the get go. So it looks like the technical preview does not allow you to uh, connect your clients using HTTP. Okay, that caused a lot of problem with my Pixie. That caused a lot of problems with my web servers role because when you have it as HTTPS, you have to have a valid KI, uh, PKI certificate. And I just didn't have the time to do that. So I, I had a lot of problems doing today's video. So I actually had to use my home SCCM server. So I'm super happy that I got my home server up and running and my home server does has HTTP, um, HTTP uh, for the distribution point and the MP. So right now for the server that we're building, if I go to the DP, the DP again, if we go inside, da -da -da -da, all right here see so in general https is grayed out i can't go into http so regardless when i did the installation i went back into my notes i went back to the videos to see if i missed something i didn't miss anything it was http was disabled it was grayed out and the create the sale sign certificate doesn't work with https you have to have pki certificate for your clients and i just had so many problems right so today we are not using our SCCM machine that we built together within uh, you know and within this infrastructure I'm actually logging into my home machine it goes my home machine and I'm super excited that um, that we're actually using my home machine because my home machine is the one that I, I basically test everything out for work environment right and this guy is running it's running like a cheetah fast strong i'm super excited so within this server if i go to management point and i right click on that the properties it is set to http i had no problems with the steps that i'm going to be showing you guys at all everything just went with butter i was super excited that's my that's my mp and my dp is this guy right here so i'm gonna right click go to properties and again http awesome I self signed certificate no no matters it works and then the steps that I'm gonna be showing you guys pretty soon uh, it's gonna go over how I got everything configured now before I even start because deploying takes forever what I'm going to do with my home server I'm gonna go inside my PC or my Fire Explorer I'm gonna go into my F Drive my F Drive fast F, uh, VMs is my solid state drive so I'm gonna create a folder here and I'm gonna call it BJ dash T S R zero one two because that's uh today's episode and i'm going to copy this path i'm going to close this browser again you guys saw it and there's nothing in that folder i'm going to do a file new virtual machine i'm going to go next uh next uh, microsoft windows windows 1064 that is what we're deploying click on next i'm going to paste that path and i want this name to be the same for the virtual machine bj dash tsr zero one two and we're gonna click on next on that uh i'm gonna give it 60 gigs it's not bad and click on next and we're gonna finish i'm gonna let that load up excellent excellent so i want to start this process now and the reason why i want to start this process is because it takes a long long time when you're creating an mdt task sequence within sccm they give you a crap load of uh, uh, like sequences it's just a lot you, you could clean it up but with this video i left everything as the default so I'm going to power this virtual machine and I'm going to hit yes on that and I'm going to click F12 like a madman. So I got my picks, uh, my DHCP working. I got everything working. I'm going to show you guys how everything is configured within my uh, my DHCP because my DHCP had to be configured. I had to uh, do the boot file name as well as I think it was 67, 60, and 66. I had to enable that within my uh dhcp so if i go inside my my home sccm server this server is basically an all-in-one and if you're probably saying to yourself what the hell do you mean about all-in-one this machine is 
SCCM, Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, SQL, uh, IIS. It's just an all-in-one machine, right? It's not the best practice, but when you're testing stuff out at home or at your work lab, hey, you could do that stuff, especially if you have the power, the process power, and also the memory. So within my SCCM at home, if I go inside my DHCP, I want that to load up. And I'm going to expand this a little bit. And I do apologize that I cannot zoom in because the zoom in feature does not allow me to do it within the remote desktop. Again, I'm in remote desktop at home. So if I go into the IPv4 and I go inside the scope, I, I got a scope right here. And uh, let's go back here. It is loading. Awesome. Uh, dress. Awesome. Awesome. It has to be one of these machines or that guy right there. So let's go to scope options. So this is what I added, these three guys right here, uh, 66, 67, 60. Now, you don't really need to do this within your DHCP. If you have a network admin, just talk to them so they could configure your switches, your managed switches within your infrastructure to do IP helper because that would be much easier to do it that way. Uh, for me, because I'm doing everything within a virtual environment, I could probably get a virtual... Um, uh, a virtual like a uh, switch or something, a managed switch, and I can configure it that way. But for my lab, I like to use the DHCP because it's there, it's easy. It's the one that's pushing out the IP addresses and all that good stuff to my machine, so why not? So I did a 66, 67, 60. 66, I gave it the IP address, which is the SCCM. Uh, the boot file name is pointed to SMS boot x64, okay? For uh, when you're dealing with MDT, MDT actually does boot x64 and i'm doing the pixie client which is this so we go inside look at that oh awesome is that so you're probably saying so why does it say microsoft deployment toolkit when you're using uh mic when you're using mdt within sccm and you create a task sequence you're actually using the the utilities and the files for mdt to do the deployment so i'm actually using an mdt boot image to deploy so i actually gave my pixie my Pixie boot a password is best practice is best best practice to do that because you don't want no average Joe to F12 any of your machines within your network and then automatically they're able to wipe it clean and deploy an operating system. You don't want that. So adding a password is the best way in my eyes. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, password or not password? Leave comments right below at the chat section. So I'm gonna enter my password. Right, right now it's retrieving the policy. And the policy right now is Windows 10 X64 V1511 with MDT. That is the task sequence name. And I'm gonna show you guys right now. So I'm gonna close my DHCP. And if I go into uh, software library, operating systems and task sequence, that is the name of the task sequence that we have. And I'm just gonna hit next. And we're just gonna let it ride. We're just gonna let it be. Okay, so I'm going to minimize my remote desktop and I'm going to bring the PowerPoint up and I'm going to start the slideshow, right? Because I like doing PowerPoints because it keeps me on point. It keeps me in a straight arrow rather than going off off topic. And because I know you guys just want you just want the facts. Right. So uh, and checking the live stream, I got 18 strong individuals watching. Thank you so much. Thank you times 18. For all those individuals that are tuning in, I appreciate it. I love, I, I love you guys. You guys are my family, my YouTube family, my my techie, my tech bros, right? Uh, so let me stop talking and start with the slide. So as you know, today is all about MDT integrated with SCCM 1706. Okay, so install MDT within your SCCM server. Again, you have to install MDT deployment workbench within your SCCM server. So the first thing you need to do is download that Microsoft Deployment Toolkit installation. When you double click on it, you're going to get this nice little wizard. Again, the version that I'm deploying within my SCCM is uh, MDT 2012 Update 2. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't do 8443. It, it still worked. Just got to make sure that you upgrade the ADK version that supports the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Okay. Hit next. Accept the license agreement, hit next on that. Uh, by default, it's going to drop it on the C drive. 
Uh, you could change the location as you want. Uh, I think best practice is don't drop it on the C drive, drop it somewhere else. I think on my home server, I dropped it on the D drive. And uh, I don't want to join the program at this time. Just hit next on that, hit install. You're going to get the, uh, the user account control. Just hit yes. It's going to copy all the new files. And once it's complete, you're done. And you don't need to do anything. So do not open up Workbench and create a deployment share uh, folder. So if you guys have been tuning in with my MDT stuff, the first thing that I normally do is open up Workbench, right? Deployment Workbench, right click on a node and create a new node. Don't do that, okay? Now it's time to integrate the MDT with your configuration manager. To do that, you wanna go inside Start. Within Start, you wanna go inside configure uh, your Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And within there, you're going to see an option that says Configure, conf uh, configure Configuration Manager uh, Integration. Uh, you want to right click, go to more, and you want to run it as an administrator. Now, when you run it as an admin within the SCCM, you, you're going to get this, right? You can use your access control, just hit yes. But you're automatically, this information right here is going to get pre populated. Okay? Let's see if I could zoom in for you guys. Let's see. There you go. Okay? So this information right here, when you right click on the, the integration tool within your MDT, it's going to pre-populate it for you. So that's one less headache that you have to do. Okay? Awesome. So you click next. It's going to process. Once it processes, you're going to get this. This is always a good thing. You're going to hit finish. Boom. Now, when you want to test it out, you go inside your, your SCCM console. You go to software. And within software, you go to operating systems or overview operating systems. Then go to task sequence. Right-click on task sequence, and you're going to see a nice new option that says create MDT task sequence. Awesome. By default, you're going to get create task sequence right here. And you're going to have create task sequence media import task sequence. This is the new addition once you integrate your MDT stuff within your SCCM server. Now, adding a Windows 10 media. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, if those individuals that have dealt with SCCM you know, adding Windows Media is way different than adding Windows Media with MDT. Because within Windows, and uh, within my uh, MDT server, you right click on the operating system node, right? You create a folder, which I love creating folders, and then you import the operating system and then you tell MDT where those sources are located. Uh, it's a little different dealing with SCCM. So with SCCM, again, I'm doing everything within a virtual environment. So I mounted my Windows 10 1703 64-bit ISO. I mounted it into my SCCM machine. And I created a folder within my C drive course sources. Now, within sources, I changed the permissions and I shared it out. I gave the permissions to everyone and I have full control and change and read. Now... If you're really tight with security, give it a dollar sign. Give it a nice little dollar sign so it can be hidden. Okay, but make sure when we're gonna be using this source file within our when we're creating a task sequence. So just make sure you have that dollar sign uh, because it won't work. Okay. So once I changed the permissions, it was good to go. And within the source file, let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Zoop. Awesome. So within sources, I created a folder called OSD you know, operating system uh, deployment, uh, OS image, operating system images. I created a Windows 10 X64 folder, and I created another subfolder within Windows 1064, which is builds. Because most likely Microsoft, you know how Microsoft is, is going to have a shitload of builds. Sorry, apologize for the cursing. Yeah, but they're going to have a crap load of builds. Uh, so the build that we're doing is V1703, okay? But for my home lab, I did 1511. So it's the same thing. This right here could change. You you don't really have to follow what I'm doing, but this would give you a kind of a, a basic understanding of what you have to do. But you could do it whatever way best works in your environment. Okay? Let's get out of that. Next slide. So what you need to do within that ISO or folder or network folder where the content of your Windows 10 media stuff is located, you want to copy and paste it inside that build folder. Okay. So I, I created the build V1703. So I got all the content within that ISO and I moved it over. Just copy it over. Right. Copy and paste. So the next thing that you need to do is add that operating system image. So within your console, you need to go inside your software library. Overview, operating system, operating system images, right click on that and add an operating system image. Simple, right? 
Then from here, you're gonna get the nice little uh, ad operating system image wizard. So from you, you gotta give it a path. Now each path, if if you you can't give it a a location, you can't say C drive colon backslash backslash blah 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 blah. You have to give it the UNC path. Okay, so it has to be the the server. So my server is this sources OSD the full the full uh, path. And then it's going to be inside sources, and you're pointing to the install.wim file. Okay? It even tells you right here in the example. Right here. So I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Bingo. There you go. See? It tells you. Point to the file.wim. It would have been smarter if they would have told you point to the install.wim file. But no. They tell you file. A lot of people are probably saying, what the hell do you mean by file? It's the install.wim. Okay? Because I believe within the media, uh, inside the sources, within the media content of your Windows uh, folder, within sources, I think there's two WIM files. I think there's an install and there's a boot. I'm not too sure. For those in the chat room, correct me if I'm right or wrong. Let me know if there is a boot and install. Okay. So I'm going to get out of that. And we're going to go next. Now, so the next one is genuine information. Give it a name, give it a version, and give it a comment. Uh, once you hit next, you get the nice little summary of what's going on. Hit next, progress, completion. It's really simple, real fast. And that's it. So the next thing, once you have your operating system already installed within your SCCM, uh, again, go inside the software library, operating system, operating system images, and right-click on your Windows 10 Enterprise um, image or whatever you call it and distribute the content. You need to distribute that content within your distribution list. So you're going to get this nice little wizard once you click on this guy, click on next, click on add, and again, you're going to add to your DP. Depending on what you, what kind of infrastructure you have with me, my lab, I only have one DP, so that's the one I'm going to pick, which is the on-premise one. And then you're going to click on next, nice little summary, click next, completion, close it, and then you're good to go. Done. Now, the next thing that you need to do is configure your network access account. Okay, I know at the very beginning we created a, a couple of accounts within our Active Directory, and one of them was a SCCM underscore NAA or NAA underscore SCCM. Uh, for my lab, I'm using everything as an administ as an admin, everything admin account. I know it's really bad practice, but for testing, and I want to make sure everything is working correctly, I try to use one account to make sure everything is working then later on I you know I do a little tweaks in there and there to uh, adjust for security reasons so to configure your uh, network access accounts again you need to go into administ uh, administration site configuration sites you're gonna right click on your site go to configure site components and you're gonna click on software distribution you're gonna get you know go once you get that dialog box which is the properties you're going to go to Network Access Accounts. Uh, it says use the computer account of the Configuration Manager client. You don't want that. That's the default setting. So what you want to do is you want to specify an account that has access to network locations. So click on that. And once you click on that, you're going to get this option. Click on the little star, new account, and then provide the information. For me, again, I provided my admin. So that's the information that I gave it. Give the password, and then bam. And click OK. Boom. It's real simple. Now, the next thing that you need to do is enable Pixie support on your DP. Okay. Now, when you enable Pixie support in your DP, there's something that's happening behind the scenes. And what's happening behind the scenes is um, WDS is being installed automatically. So that means you're going to see a remote install folder pop up. Now, a lot of people don't tell you this that when your pixie support you have to give it some time to, you have to check logs and monitor the logs to make sure your pixie support is done the way that you could do it is go inside server manager refresh server manager and see if wds service and roles is there go inside your c drive or d drive for me at home it dropped in my d drive uh and make sure your remote install folder is there then reboot your sccm a lot of people don't tell you that so reboot your sccm once the pixie support has completed itself in the background make sure you reboot if not you're gonna have a crap load of problems so to enable it on your dp again like i, I said go inside your server manager 
And for me at home, I didn't have, um, I I did not have WDS. These are the roles that I had within there. So when I went inside uh, administration uh, distribution point and I clicked on my DP, I right click, I right clicked on it and I went to properties. You're gonna get this. Go to Pixie, and once you go to Pixie. Uh, you just check off enable Pixie support for clients. Now you're gonna get a warning. This right here is indicating that Pixie requires UDP 67, 68, 69, and 4011, and for operating system installation UDP 69. So you gotta make sure that stuff is opened up because then your Pixie won't work correctly. It, it also gives you a warning that Windows Defender Firewall on this server configuration manager will automatically configure rules to allow these ports. So that's a good thing. So what you want to do is just hit yes. And then once you hit yes, you're going to get all this, all this right here. So let me, uh, there you go. You're going to get all this stuff enabled. So make sure you check off, allow this DP to respond to incoming Pixie requests. Make sure enable unknown computer support. You definitely want this. You want to enable unknown computer support because if you don't have unknown computer support, that means the computer that you're deploying to has to be within the SCCM, within one of the collections already for it to retrieve the operating system, to retrieve that task sequence that's being advertised to that collection. You don't want that. Half of the time, that's just too much work. You just want to plug in your computer, configure BIOS if it's not configured to Pixie, F12 it, F12, boom, 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 you're done, right? And uh, another option I like is require password when computers use Pixie. Like I said, I like using that a lot because I don't want no average Joe to come in and automatically they want to get, you know, they want to get saucy. Press F12, press F12, and then, you know, they're re-imaging a machine that's very important on the floor. We don't want that. So definitely require a password. So the next thing that you need to do is user device affinity. Uh, you got to make sure that you choose. By default, it says do not use user device, but make sure you change it to allow user device affinity for automatic approval. Automatic approval. Cool. You do a manual approval. That's just more work. I like to make, I like to have everything to the point that I just less touching during oper during deployment time, you know, less clicking. I just want to leave it and forget it and just come back later and just make, you know, everything is working, right? That's like a dream come true. All right, let's get out of there. Once you have all that set, just hit apply. Again, give it some time. Go get a cup of coffee. Go get lunch. Do something. Bathroom break. Walk around your office. Start talking. Take a 15-minute break. It, this takes time. Don't Don't pressure it. Once everything is done, uh, eventually you go back into your server manager. Server manager, I refreshed it, and long and behold, I saw the WDS role. And I also went inside the C drive, and the C drive it said remote install. But a lot of people don't tell you, you know, Google. When you Google it and you search for this stuff, they don't tell you to reboot your server afterwards. Reboot your server because when you're installing WDS on your server manually. It does a reboot, or I think it requests a reboot. So do the reboot. Got it? All right. So next thing to do is, okay, we have our MDT. We enable our Pixie. That's all good. We have our operating system. So it's time to utilize our MDT integration. So right now we're going to create an MDT boot image, MDT toolkit, and MDT settings package. Okay. So to create a task sequence is really simple. We want to go into your administration node. You want to go to operating systems, right click on your task sequence, and again, we are creating a create a MDT task sequence. You can get the nice little wizard. And when you click on the drop down, you get a you get a lot of well known or kind of task sequences that we have seen within MDT. They provide the t uh, client task sequence, which is a straightforward push. Wipe clean the operating system, uh, wipe clean the hard drive, partitioning it, uh, partitioning it and uh, install the operating system. You got the client replace task sequence, you have Microsoft deployment custom task sequence, you have server task sequence, and you have a user-driven installation replace task sequence. The one that we're doing is a client task sequence for now. When you hit next, uh, give the task sequence a name, you give it whatever you want. In my lab, I gave it Windows 10 S64 version 1511 with MDT because that's what I'm pushing out at home. And uh, for Work group. 
Uh, this is really up to you. I'm joining it into the work group. I'm not joining it to the domain as of yet. Uh, but you definitely need to provide, uh, let me see if I zoom in, zoom in, there you go. You definitely need to provide a window settings. You've probably seen this when you create your task sequence within MDT. This information is somewhat the same thing, right? It's just more stuff. It just looks fancier because you have more options right here in the side. So make sure you give it a username organization name and you can actually provide the product key right here if you have a I think a MK M A K license I think you could just have it there uh, make sure that you enable the account and specify a local uh, admin password because if not it's going to randomly generate the local admin password and disable the account and you're, you're screwed so make sure you enable it okay once all that's done, uh, you're gonna hit next, and I like I enter all this information. Hit next. So the this task sequence would never be used to capture an image. Now, if this task sequence is going to establish a capture, go for it. But for my lab for this show, I didn't do a capture the image portion. Uh, so the next thing I did was uh, the next thing that I did was within sources OSD, I created a folder called boot. And within boot, I created two folders, my Windows PE 10 64 and my Windows PE 10 86, 64 bit, 32 bit. The one that I'm using is the 64 bit. OK, I'm, I need to create a boot image uh, using MDT to boot within the MDT environment to deploy. OK, and the next option after the capture is the boot images. And you have two options. By default, specify an existing boot image package is selected. If you already have a boot image package, go for it. I think uh, SCCM automatically creates two boot images for you. I believe is like, I think it's called the unknown unknown computers 86 and unknown computers 64. I believe uh, we want to create a new boot image package. And again, it's pointing to that. And you're gonna click next. And it also gives you a note that Windows 10 NDK. Uh, must be installed on the current machine in order for this to work. So make sure you have Windows uh, 10 ADK. And you should have it already because you have SCCM inside your, your server. Hit next on that and genuine information. Give you some information. I call the Windows PE 1064, the version 1703. It could be whatever you have within your environment. For options, uh, you have 86, 64 bit. See right here, a lot of people complain. They're like, why are you saying 86? It's not 86, it's 32. Even Microsoft calls it 86. So it's, it's nuts. So because I'm deploying 64 bit, I chose that. Scratch this, you could change the option, but I left it as 32. That is the default option that it picks for you. The next option is the cool option. Because uh, a lot of this, a lot of us have seen this within MDT when you right click on the deployment share and you go to properties. And when you go to properties, they have a component a component section that allows you to inject uh, certain features within your boot image. So for me, as always, I like to have .NET Framework and Windows PowerShell. Yep. For customization, right here from customization, this is where you could customize your background. Uh, you could customize your boot image. You can add a crap load of customization. I didn't do any customization this time, but this is where you do all the cool stuff to customize your deployment to feel like it's home. Like if, it, you know, like work, you probably have your work logo in the corner or whatever. Uh, once you do all that, click on next. And now you have specified Microsoft deployment toolkit files package to use. By default, you can specify an existing MDT toolkit file package. Uh, I didn't have one, so I created a new one. And the path, click next. Uh, the path is this guy right here. So again, o OSD, MDT, MDT build 8443, toolkit, I created a folder. And there's nothing inside these folders. All this stuff is going to get pre-populated once you create your task sequence. So don't don't go crazy saying, what's inside that toolkit? What's inside that Windows PE 1064 bit folder that you showed us? There's nothing inside these folders. It's blank. It's just a folder that I created and I just pointed in there. Because eventually when you get to the point of progress right here in the bottom this task sequence is going to drop everything inside those folders for you once you have that path you're going to click on next again it's using the umc right a lot of this stuff is uh using the unc path so click on next 
give it a name. I gave it an MDT toolkit, the version, language, and, and manufacturer. The next thing is the operating system. So hit browse. Once you hit browse, you're going to get this nice little window and you pick your operating system. I only have one operating system and that's the Windows 10 one that I imported inside my operating system image node. Node. <laughs> All right. So once you do that, you pick it, you hit next. Once you hit next, this entire section right here, right? I'm going to go back. Image details, image source, OS image index, all that stuff will skip automatically. You don't really need to do that because remember, when you import your operating system inside the operating system system image, it grabs all that information for you. Now, you have two deployment methods. One, I definitely favor, and another one, hey, it's, it's up to you. I don't really know how you like to run your environment, but I would definitely like to know what you guys think. Now, for your deployment method, do you would you like to do a zero-touch installation or perform a user-driven installation? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the definitions of it. So the zero-touch installation is awesome. There's no user interaction. Interaction. You, in, interaction. Interaction. You don't want your users to interact with your deployment. You have everything set up and configured within your task sequence to automatically do everything that you need it to do. So you don't need to touch it. Users, get out of here. Go get, go grab lunch or go home. So, And then you have perform user-driven installation. So basically, at the beginning of the operating system, the deployment process, a wizard would be displayed to allow the user to choose. Ah, you don't want that. You do not want that. And then us IT people don't want this either. Who the hell wants to stay after hours clicking next, clicking next, and choosing stuff? No way. Let's do the zero-touch Let's do the zero touch installation and just get it over with. So I want to know which one you guys would do. I bet you the majority of you guys that are watching are probably going to do, I do zero touch installation because it makes sense. I don't even know why Microsoft even adds the user driven installation one. Who knows? So once you pick your option, click on next and you're going to specify an existing uh, config manager client package. If you hit the browse button, there's already packages within your SCCM that SCCM creates for you. So just pick the configuration manager client package and then you're going to hit next. And then specify an existing USMT, which I believe USMT stands for user, user State Migration Tool. I think that's what it stands for. If I'm right, let me know at the comment section. So what you're going to do is hit Browse. And again, uh, yeah, yeah, I was right. User State Migration Tool. Awesome. So again, SCCM already provides you a package. So just pick it. Choose it. If SCCM does it for you, great. If you want to create one for you, if you want to create one for yourself, go for it. But I'm going to take advantage that SCCM already created a package for me. So I clicked on that and click on next. And now uh, settings. So I'm going to zoom in on this one and specify a setting settings package to use. The package contains the custom settings I and I and unintended installation files needed for the OS deployment. Custom custom settings I now I remember all that stuff that we add in there, like the domain, the 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 way that your your progress bar looks, the keyboard, the location, all that stuff, skipping stuff. This is where you make the you do the magic. You can put it here. So what I did was I created a folder. I created a folder within my OSD, within my MDT called settings. Again, there's nothing inside settings. Nothing. It's just an empty folder, but it's pointing there. Again, when we finish the process of creating this MDT task sequence, it's going to drop stuff in there for you. Okay? Once you do that, hit next. Uh, give the package some properties, name, version, language, manufacturer, and leave a comment. Uh, for my lab, I don't like to leave comments, but I, I'll, I'll kind of recommend to leave comments for the next individual that's going to take over the SCCM so they know what's what. That Be a nice technician, right? <laughs> We're going to hit next on that. All right, so let me see. All right, cool. Go next. Uh, no SIP prep package is required. We're not dealing with that. By default, That's the only, we don't have any other options than that, so hit next. And uh, that's gonna skip. It's gonna sip. It's gonna skip the sip prep details. Go straight to the summary. Nice little summary. Of what's gonna happen? Hit next. Uh, Microsoft deployment toolkit. It's gonna. Uh, it's gonna say, "Hey, 
making some changes. Do you want to make changes? Heck yeah. Hit yes on that bad boy. And it's going to start creating the boo image. Now, this process takes a while. Again, go walk around the office or go somewhere, do something. Uh, because this takes about, uh, it took about mm, 10 to 15 minutes for me to create. I think I, think I wasn't timing it. Then once everything is completed, this is always a great thing. The process completed successfully. I love that. Hit finish, done. So you just finished creating an MDT task sequence within your SCCM. Now again, this slide uh, PDF form is at the bottom of the video. Grab a copy of it, uh, keep it, it is yours. Share it, share the video, do whatever you want. This is your thing. I think the only thing I forgot and I do apologize is I should have created the PDF with notes. Then you guys could take like little notes on the side. I completely forgot. Uh, eventually, I think I might change that. I don't know. So the next thing is distribute your new task sequence. We need our our we need our network to know about this new task sequence. What's going on? We just created the task sequence. No one knows about it. Okay. So what we need to do is within software library, we're gonna task sequence, and again, we're gonna see that beautiful task sequence that we created. Actually, we didn't create together, but you know, you know what I mean. You're gonna right click on it. And once you right-click, you're going to see an option that says Distribute Content. Click on that guy. And then you're going to have a nice little wizard, the Distribute Content Wizard. And we're going to click on Next. This is the content information that's going to be distributed to your network, right? We got to make it public. Like, hey, world, this is this is the new task sequence. Make it live. And we're going to hit Next. But uh, we've got to make sure we pick our DP. DP is our distribution point. So click on Add, DP. Again, I only have one DP within my premise. Click on that, boom, hit next. Nice little summary. And if everything goes well, you're gonna get that big fat green check mark. That's always a good thing to have that green check mark. Awesome. Now, guys have to understand when you distribute your task sequence, your, when you distribute your boot image, when you distribute your operating system within your SCCM to the network, you know, you're distributing it, like you're advertising it. This stuff takes time. So uh, be patient just extremely be patient i was really like I, I wanted stuff to work like why is this one working and then eventually when i came back the next day stuff was working i just it just gotta just you know take a chill pill right with this stuff uh hit close and then you're good to go now the next thing that we need to do is enable pixie support but you're probably saying to yourself but bernard we enabled pixie already yes we did enable pixie but we enable pixie within our dp our distribution point we didn't enable pixie support within our mdt boot image okay so the way that you do that when you go to software library you go to overview operating system boot images you're going to see this new guy Okay, that's our boot image. Remember, within our MDT task sequence, we created a boom Im a boot image, and that's the name that we gave it. So right click on it, and uh, what you guys think you gotta do? Ah, we gotta go to properties. Gotta go to properties, and within properties, go to data source. Within data source, boom, right here in the bottom, deploy this boot image from the pixie enabled distribution point click on that click apply now one thing that i noticed with my home server now my home server at home is fully licensed i have a full blown sccm licensed server it's no no eval i have no 100 days left or anything and i definitely want to give a big thanks to anthony uh from florida i think was it florida oh from san francisco was it san francisco yeah i think Oh, I forgot. For, but my man from Anthony, big big thumbs up. He hooked me up with a copy of SCCM. And without him, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, but with my home, there is a, within my home server, which I'm going to show you guys, there's an index, an image index. Within the technical preview, they don't have an image index. So that's another weird thing that I noticed with, between the real version and the... Uh, you know the beta version so once you check this off you're gonna hit apply and next thing is deploy your task sequence again you distribute it now it's time to deploy it who who's gonna get the task sequence you distribute it public you advertise it but who is who's who's gonna get the task sequence super simple so again again software library is our best best place to be because this is where we're always at 
I think the majority of the time that I was playing with SCCM, I was always within the software library. So within software library, again, overview, operating system, task sequence, click on your task sequence and right click and hit deploy. When you hit deploy, you get this little uh, deploy software wizard. And by default, you get the task sequence and collection. Okay. Now the collection, I hit browse and you get this warning right here. It says Windows 10 SCC4 version 1703, which is the name of our task sequence, has potential to be a high risk deployment. Therefore, the select collection windows displays only the custom collections that meet the site's configuration for collection size deployment. So click OK. I bypassed that. I was like, whatever. And uh, I only have a few options. I think I had all workstations, all unknown computers, and all servers. So I pick all unknown computers, right? And all unknown computers have the 64 and 86 clients within it. Click on next and make sure that the purpose is available and you're gonna make available to the following. So you have a couple of options here and for what I read online and uh, it looks like only media and pixie is the best option you don't want your configuration manager clients to get this advertisement you don't want that you only want uh, only media and uh, pixie to, to be picked okay once you do that go to next and you got your scheduling if you want to schedule this appointment go for it if you leave it if you leave it alone it's going to just push it out right away this scheduling deployment part will will work best when you're deploying an upgrade like if you have windows sevens within your machine uh, within your infrastructure and you created a windows 10 upgrade task sequence this right here would be a two thumbs up to configure definitely because you want to schedule that hit next again uh specify the user experience for the installation of this software on the selected device i left everything as default it shows the task sequence progress and uh, it also commits changes at deadline or during a maintenance windows and requires a restart. I left everything as default, but you have a you have a crap load of other options. I just left everything as is. You even have alerts. I left it alone. A DP. Uh, I only have one option within my deployment options, and that's deploy uh, download content locally when needed by running the task sequence. I didn't check none of this stuff off. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I left everything as the default. So no local DP is available using remote. I don't have a remote DP. So if you have one, make sure you check that off. Uh, also, allow clients to use the DP from the default site boundary. This will limit you because that means if you have different uh, default sites, this will kind of screw you up. So don't do that. And also, uh, allow clients to share content with other clients on the same network. Well, you don't want that either. I think this would cause a bottleneck. What else? Uh, click next. And once you click next, you have a nice little summary of what's going to happen. And next. And everything checks off. It's pretty, it's pretty seamless. Get all those green check marks. Close it. And that's it. That's the end of our journey. Dun, dun, dun. So let's go back inside my, uh, my home server still being deployed i mean it takes a crap load it, it takes a lot so i want to i want to go inside my home server right here send a control delete and let's log in to this machine beautiful and i want to show you guys a couple of things so let's go inside the boot image and i want to right click on the boot image and go to properties and within properties let's go to data source and this is what i was talking about within the technical preview it doesn't give you the image index it, it just is not there. I don't know if, I don't know because the t, the technical preview was configured as HTTPS. That's the reason why I don't have an image index. But hey, I'm happy that my home computer has it. Okay. Uh, another thing with the task sequence. This is what I want to show you. Is, ugh, this, this, this task sequence is basically MDT's task sequence in steroids. So or actually, I'm going to right click on this and go to edit. Look at that. This is this, <laughs> this task sequence is on steroids. I think if I go back here, it's gather it's in the gathering complete section. I think I saw the software part and 
I think it's I think it's in this stage right here. I think it's in this stage right here. Now I'm gonna compare it with MDT. So let's get in here. Let's right click on here and let's open up our MDT server. Now this is uh this is the lab server, not home. And let's work let's open up the workbench. And I just want to show you guys the difference between TASUC and the power that you get within SCCM. SCCM is awesome. Again, it's SCCM is basically MDT on steroids. The only difference is is that with system manager you have to pay for it with mdt you don't have to pay for it i think that's i think that's the major reasons to with those two they both are able to deploy with mdt you have to work twice as hard to get the stuff that you want or the stuff that you see within sccm because within sccm they automatically give you the the background info stuff they already give you that stuff with mdt you have to work a little hard you have to configure it and tell it that this is how you want it and this is how it should look. So let's look at one of the configuration files. I'm going to right click on this one and go to properties. Get a little water. All right, so within the properties, let's look at the task sequence. Look at the, look at the difference between this. Look at that. Look at that. It doesn't look a lot. It really doesn't look a lot. But compared to this guy right here, woo, this guy is a lot. But don't, don't get me wrong. You could go in here and clean it up. I think once you clean it up and remove some of the stuff that you do not need, the process would be a little faster. But again, I left everything as the default. I can actually look at that. Look, wow. Beautiful. Crazy. Let's see. Let's look at it. Right now, is at the tattoo. Where's the tattoo right here? I think this is where it's at right now. Yeesh, you got a long way to go. Long way to go. But I mean, that's it. I mean, <laughs> that's it. That's it. All oh, right now is doing the CEIP right there. So it says right there. This is where it's at right now. It's deploying. How exciting is that? And I, I mean, that's it. Holy crap. That's it. That's that's the end of the show. Wow. All right, so we have 17 strong people. We did not go over one hour. This is awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the live stream up for until four o'clock, and I'm gonna cut it at four o'clock. We're just gonna end it, but that's it. Holy moly, awesome! Um, super excited. Uh, again, uh, let's let's go inside the chat. See if you guys have any questions at all. Let's go inside. Hey, Jeff. Jeff from Texas. How you doing? Got people from uh, Charlotte. Hello, hello. From UK, Kyle. Nice, nice. Yes, the the version that I used within Technical Preview was MDT uh, eighty four forty three. Uh, but I think within within my lab, I'm gonna show you guys within my lab. If I go to Control Panel, uh, let's go to Programs and Features. And the version that I'm running within my MDT, let's adjust this. So, yep, 8443. That is the version that I'm running with my Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Okay? Cool, cool, cool. If you're wondering what version of ADK, I'm actually running 14.393. It's not the latest. Trust me, it's not the latest one. I definitely need to upgrade this. But it worked. Everything worked with that version. So, I'm, I'm happy. Ah, uh, thank you so much for following, uh, Jan from UK. I appreciate it. Uh, I I do hope that the knowledge that I push out to you guys every Saturday and even Monday through Thursdays uploads help everyone out. I try my hardest to help everyone out. Um, Charlie, hello, how you doing? Fuzzy focus. Oh, uh, what you mean, focus? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, it's 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 fuzzy because I'm RDPing. <laughs> I'm RDPing within my uh, 
my home server. That's that's why it's kind of kind of fuzzy. And then I'm pushing out 720 to you guys. I'm not really pushing out 1080 because I don't really want to kill my network. And if I kill my network, it's just gonna really die on me. Awesome. Another individual from UK. I got a lot of UK guys joining. I appreciate you guys. I think in UK, what time is it at UK? Is it nighttime? I think what is it? Around nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. We have one person, zero touch all the way. Awesome. All right, guys. So we have five more minutes. Five more minutes. It looks like we're we're going pretty strong. Uh everything is Everything is configured. I'm super excited. Everything is working the way it's supposed to work. Right now, it is building the list and programs to run the software package. So that means is in, if I right click on this guy and go to edit. And it's actually, it's over here. So it looks like it's going to complete. We got like four more minutes until I end the, the show. Super happy for all you guys joining. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Again, uh, I got a crap load of links at the bottom of the video. One link is for you guys to subscribe to my newsletter. Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. If you've been following me uh, every Saturday, uh, showing up, tuning in. The reason why is because Thursdays or Fridays, I shoot out an email indicating what's going to happen for Saturday, the agenda, what I'm covering uh, previous videos of what I've done, like the extra work that I've done to get uh, to this point. And uh, just make sure you guys subscribe to that because if anything happens and I can't make it to a show, I would definitely shoot out the newsletter and let you guys know that it's canceled and we're going to follow up the next week or so. So so please make sure that you uh, subscribe to the newsletter. You know, I know it's another email, another spam email. It's not really spam. It's just very informative just to let you guys know what's going to happen on Saturday. If it's going to happen, not it's gonna, if it's not going to happen or happen, uh, what's gonna what you know what we're gonna cover and what we're gonna do? Close this out of here. It's still doing it. This again, this process takes a long time, and this is the reason why I started the deployment because it takes a long time. But um, again, I think once it completes, I am going to take a picture of it or some video and post it up on my Instagram as well as my Twitter. So if you guys uh, follow me at Facebook. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I have all that stuff. I normally post up a lot of pictures of stuff that I've done. Uh, make sure you follow me because most likely I'm not going to stay until this deployment is done because right now it's running the action install applications. I don't have any applications, but it has a crap load more stuff for it to finish before it's fully deployed. But And I don't want to keep you guys here waiting. Uh, but overall... Thank you so much for everyone joining. Thank you for leaving comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support, guys. Uh, I think I, I don't have anything planned for next week's episode. I have to work on it to see what else I'm going to tackle for the next episode of the server room. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in. Uh, we have about two more minutes. Where can we download? Um... Do you have the PowerPoint file somewhere? Yes. The PowerPoint, sir, is underneath the video in the description. Let me see if I could grab the video for you guys right now. I mean the video. Let me see if I could grab the link. Bam. Here you go. Free of charge. <laughs> For your charge, there goes the link. There goes the link for the PowerPoint. I just snorted. That's crazy. We got one more minute until I end it. Uh, so I'm gonna min I'm gonna remove this, remove that. I just want to show you guys. Look at that beautiful. Right now it's convert list to two digits. It's still doing its thing. Uh, I'm gonna take a snapshot, take a picture, Instagram it, Facebook it, and Twitter, so you guys can see the final results of everything. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns or tips and tricks, do not leave it at the live chat because the live chat disappears. Disappears once uh, I end the live stream. 
So make sure you come back once the video is fully loaded within the channel. Come back, leave your leave your comments or chatting or tips and tricks there, because then I get an email and I read them, and, you know, and follow up with you guys. Again, thank you so much, guys. Uh, big respect to all of you. Big, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, again, thank you so much for joining, guys. It is, it's Saturday, June 17th, I think, June 17th, 2017, The Server Room. Once again, we did it. We did it together. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the notes. Grab those notes. They're there. They're free, free of charge. And uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Peace out. All right, how you in this? I think you ended like this. I think so. How you end it? Does anyone know how to end it? Wait a minute. Do you have to press the button that says stop streaming? I'm going to press the button. I'm going to click the button. All right, guys. I'm joking. Later.